Yo, 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 what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Adam Moose, and today we're going to be continuing our series called In Depth. This video is going to be a Season 11 in depth guide on Lilia Jungle. Better a sleepy head than a sleepy heart. In this series, we'll be going over the difference between an average Lilia player and a great one. We'll be covering her abilities, combos, runes, items, jungle clear, strengths, weaknesses, and some final tips and tricks to make sure you can start getting some serious LP gains on Lilia Jungle. If you do enjoy this video, it would really help me out if you could leave a like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I'll be uploading high quality jungle content on the daily, so be sure not to miss out. If you want to join the community to talk with other players looking to improve, join a Discord link in the description. Hope you guys can learn something. Enjoy the video. Abilities. First things first, Lilia's passive is called Dream Laden Bow. Whenever Lilia hits a champion or monster with a skill, she deals additional max health damage, taking over time. This is the base of Lilia's kit, which allows you to really shred high HP targets down in extended fights. Lilia's Q is called Blooming Blows. Passively, Lilia gains stacking move speed when hitting enemies with spells. This works on champions, monsters, and also lane minions. In my opinion, this is Lilia's strongest feature, as it not only allows you to move quickly in teamfights, but also lets you go from camp to camp extremely fast. It's important to try and keep up the maximum 5 stacks to increase your clear speed, mobility around the map, and to be able to pull off ganks easier. By activating Blooming Blows, you'll deal magic damage to nearby enemies in a circle around you. This also deals bonus true damage to any enemies hit on the edge. This is your main DPS tool, and the ability you max first. Lilia's W is called Watch Out Eep. First off, what in the world is this ability name? Lilia slams down dealing damage in a targeted area. Any enemies hit in the center are dealt massive damage. When using this while clearing, always ensure to hit the highest HP targets with the center to speed up your clear. Keep in mind this ability also has a decent range that you can cast it from, allowing you to dodge skill shots or close the distance at the right moment. When using your W in fights, Try to predict where the enemy is moving to land that juicy sweet spot damage. Lilia's E is called Swirl Seed. Lilia tosses out a seed that damages and slows anyone hit. If it does not have a target in its way, it will continue rolling until it either hits terrain, a tower, or enemy. Swirl Seed is a pretty difficult skill to master as it will fly above enemies or walls directly in front of you. If your target is in melee range, try to use your move speed to give yourself that needed space to land your E. This skill shot is tough to pull off, but can be extremely useful as a long range engage for teamfights or ganks. It's important to keep an eye on the terrain around you to maximize the distance that your E can go. Lilia's ultimate is called Lulting Lullaby. Lilia causes all enemies with dream dust on them to become drowsy before falling asleep. Enemies who are forcibly woken up will take extra damage. This ult can seem weak at first glance, but in reality can be a massive game changer in teamfights. A multi-man sleep can instantly win your team a crucial fight. Keep in mind that you want to try and apply your dream dust to as many enemies as you can before ulting. It can also be beneficial to wait for your cooldowns to come back up or your teammates to get into position before waking up sleeping targets. Landing your W sweet spot on a sleeping target will do a massive damage, so in an ideal world, this is how you want to open up. Runes. Next up, let's talk about the best rune setups for Lilia in Season 11. In reality, there are not that many great options since the keystones being run are just perfect for a kit. First up, Dark Harvest. If you're looking for damage and carry potential, Dark Harvest is by far the best rune to go. This not only scales extremely well, but also has great synergy since Lilia's burn damage can easily proc it. If you can pick up some early stacks and get a lead, this rune setup quickly becomes extremely hard for most champions to deal with and can snowball out of control. To close out the domination page, Cheap Shot, Eyeball Collection, and Ravenous Hunter are pretty much the standard. In higher elos, Zombie Ward can be an option for extra vision control, but I would not recommend it in elos diamond and below. Ravenous Hunter is pretty much necessary since the healing you get just from farming allows you to pretty much always be full HP in the jungle. For secondary, 
the sorcery page has some solid options depending on your chosen playstyle. My personal favorite is Celerity and Water Walking. Celerity is an all around great rune to bolster your already speedy kit, and Water Walking for even more move speed and skirmishing power in the river. Nimbus Cloak is very popular, so I'll definitely mention it as well. In my experience, the burst of movement speed from Nimbus Cloak is a bit overkill unless you really think you need it into mobile comps. It can be useful into junglers such as Rek'Sai, whose entire aim is to get on top of you. Blue Smite plus Nimbus Cloak can help a lot when you're getting engaged on. If you don't think you need the extra movement speed, other solid options could be Transcendence for Ability Haste, Absolute Focus for more damage, and Gathering Storm as a scaling option. Before closing out the Domination Tree, I also want to mention Predator as a Keystone option. Although much less common, I see some extremely high elo Lilia players running Predator with some success. I'm not overly familiar with this playstyle, but can really help with ganking early on with Lilia. Next up, let's discuss Lilia's second rune page option, Phase Rush. I would say this rune setup is more situational, but can still be extremely strong into the right matchups. Good examples of when to choose Phase Rush would be champions like Olaf or Dr. Mundo, whose main goal is to slow you down and run you down. Phase Rush makes cutting out these types of champions extremely easy. To close out the primary sorcery tree, the rune setup is pretty much always the same. Nimbus Cloak for a burst of movement speed, Celerity to buff all your other sources of speed, and Water Walking for the extra power in the river. For secondary, the domination page again is pretty standard. Cheap Shot and Ravenous Hunter are the go-to options. The reason this rune page is by far the most common is because of how powerful Ravenous Hunter is on Lilia. The sustain you get makes a huge difference, so going without it most times will just make your life more difficult. The other secondary I'll mention is the Inspiration Tree. This page can be run in both rune setups, depending on if you really want the extra ability haste from Cosmic Insight, a free stopwatch from Perfect Timing, or Magical Footwear. The Inspiration setup actually works great with Predator as well, since you can reduce its cooldown. Just make sure not to combine Magical Footwear and Predator, since you won't have a keystone for 12 minutes. Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and either Armor and Magic Resist are the stats you'll be looking to pick up pretty much every game. I see some players running double Adaptive Force, but in my opinion, the Attack Speed allows you to kite camps much easier, which will help a lot in your early clears. Take this with a grain of salt, as I see Challenger players still debating whether Attack Speed or Adaptive Force is better. In the end, choose whatever option you're more comfortable with. Items. Now that you have Lilia's main rune pages, let's discuss her item builds and in which situations you should build each item. Starting items. First off, Blue Smite or Red Smite. The most common option is Blue Smite, since this helps Lilia to get on top of the enemy and begin stacking up her passive movement speed. Blue Smite is the best option into long range team comps that will be difficult to gap close into. In my opinion, Red Smite is pretty underrated on Lilia, since she thrives in extended fights where the damage reduction and burn are very beneficial. I always run Red Smite into bruisers and tanks, since this will allow you to get into the enemy's face more and output a ton of damage. Next up, let's discuss Lilia's mythic options. The number one choice by far is Leandri's Anguish. This item just synergizes perfectly with Lilia's burn damage. The double burn you get allows you to completely melt any target if you fight them for long enough. In 90% of scenarios, Leandri's is a no-brainer. I've also been seeing some high elo Lilia players running Ludin's Tempest in certain scenarios where the enemy team is extremely squishy. Although Leandri's is better in most cases, Ludin's can be viable if you're solo AP versus a team with no tanks who will not be building any magic resist. Riftmaker is a bit overrated in my opinion, since Leandri's does its job better, but in cases where you think this sustain is beneficial, Riftmaker could be an option as well. Moonstone used to be a supportive option, but it just recently got massively nerfed for champions who don't shield or heal. This means that it's pretty much never viable on Lilia anymore. For Boots, Ionian Boots Lucidity are the best overall option. They're cheap, and they'll not only give you the much needed ability haste, but summoner spell cooldown reduction as well. Other boot options are Sork Boots for magic damage, Plated Steel Caps for tankiness against auto attack based AD comps, and Merc Treads for some tenacity and magic resist. In the early game, picking up early tier 2 boots and a lost chapter are the best buys. If you have some extra gold, picking up an early dark seal can be a great way to start snowballing the game. Core items. Once you have your tier 2 boots and mythic, the next couple legendaries you pick up are pretty much standard in every Lilia build. 
The main core items are Zhonya's Hourglass, Cosmic Drive, Demonic Embrace, and Void Staff. Zhonya's is a much needed defensive tool against Burst Champions or Heavy Lockdown. Cosmic Drive is a recent tech that has been gaining a lot of priority in high elo. The movement speed and huge amount of ability haste is a great addition in Lilia's build to make you even more slippery. Demonic Embrace is an item that synergizes extremely well with both Lilia's and Leandri's burn damage. It gives you extra damage plus tankiness, which is always useful. Void Staff is also a core item right now, just because of how cheap it is. The build path is very easy and will allow you to completely shred everything in sight, even if they have magic resist. The more magic resist the enemy has, the better Void Staff gets. Final items. To close out your build, there are a couple of different options, so let me list them out here. Relonomicon for anti-heal, Banshee's Veil for magic resist and a shield, Deadman's Plate for tankiness and movement speed, Medjai's if you're snowballing, and finally, Rabadon's Death Cap for massive damage. Jungle Clears. Before we hop into the jungle routes that best suit Lilia's playstyle, let's quickly go over some general tips to improve your clears, jungle efficiency, and ganking. When clearing, it's extremely important to weave in auto attacks in between your abilities. Lilia has a decently long attack range, which allows you to kite out your jungle camps from range with your bonus movement speed. This takes some time to practice, but is very, very important to save your health in the jungle and improve your clear speed. To build on top of this, using your passive movement speed to go from camp to camp is another way to greatly speed up your clears. Always make it your goal to finish off each camp with an ability so your passive can stay up throughout the entire jungle. This also applies when looking to make a play around the map. If you're looking to gank topside after clearing a camp, make sure you drag your jungle monster to its patience limit before heading to the play. This makes it so that you get there faster and will have as much movement speed as possible for the fight coming up. When ganking, sometimes saving your E and W until the enemy uses their flash or movement abilities is the best option for more successful ganks. Using your E from long range can be very easy to dodge. Instead, using your movement speed to get in close proximity before using Swirl Seed will make this much easier to land. When you do pull off a successful gank, make sure to use Lilia's insanely fast wave clear to help push waves into tower. This is actually a pretty big benefit in Lilia's kit, since even if your laners die, you can easily stop by, push the wave, and carry on with your path. This can lead to you having massive CS numbers if pulled off correctly. In team fights, aiming your W on sleeping targets or CC targets is the best way to maximize your damage. Along with this, Trying to get in between as many targets as possible before using Q will not only set you up for some big ults, but also increase your damage output by a huge margin. Lastly, in later game fights over objectives, your main goal should be to poke with E on cooldown and fish for multi-man sleeps. If the opportunity arises, a flash Q sleep on a grouped up team can completely swing a fight in your favor. Full clear. This is the most standard Lilia path that can pretty much work in every game. It's ideal to start with a leash to greatly increase your clear speed and health. If you maximize your passive and kiting, you can full clear and hit level 4 by scuttle spawn and be ready to contest. One of Lilia's biggest strengths is her clear speed, so getting your camps on respawn timers early will set you up for success in the later stages of the game. Once you clear one quadrant of the map, example red krugs and raptors, and are looking to cross sides of the map, always be sure to look mid since you can easily stop by for a quick gank on the way over with your movement speed. If you know you're committing to a full clear, putting a second point into Q at level 3 is the fastest clearing setup. If you're not afraid of getting invaded, clearing your blue buff and gromp simultaneously is also a great way to speed up that clear. Raptors to Raptors This is an early path that abuses Lilia's extremely strong early game. You start red buff with a leash, do raptors, and path straight through mid into the enemy's raptors to steal them and bully the enemy jungler. You want to be using this path when you're versus a weak level 2 jungler, such as Rek'Sai, Elise, or Zac. Lilia's level 2 is extremely strong since your Q is on a short cooldown with very high DPS. Your movement speed also allows you to punish any junglers who don't have their CC or movement abilities skilled up yet. When passing through mid, keep in mind that queuing the wave or enemy mid to keep your movement speed is actually extremely important. This will also allow your mid laner to have priority. Make sure to play it slow once you're contesting the enemy raptors, since Lilia excels the longer the fight goes on for. Level 1 Raptor Late Invade This path is similar to the latter, but involves late invading at level 1 
to steal your enemy's raptors. It's ideal to pull this off versus a weak level 1 jungler so that they have no counterplay. If you can pull this off without them knowing, it's even better for you. The goal of this path is to instantly put the enemy on the back foot by taking their raptors. If you expect the enemy jungler to show up late or low HP, you can place a ward or even take their red. If they show up past your ward and you have lane priority mid or top, ping your teammates and try to set up a trap. A successful early invade can really snowball the game and mess up the enemy jungler's pathing. If no early action happens, you can continue back to your own jungle to clear or look for a wraparound gank. I usually only recommend this for more experienced players since pulling this off requires quite a bit of base game knowledge and jungle matchup understanding. Weaknesses Lilia's biggest weakness is how she does take quite a bit of skill to pull off correctly. Lilia is a pick that struggles to work in low elos with a pretty low win rate. The reason for this is because of the sheer mechanics it takes to use your mobility to dodge, kite, and move around the map at its highest potential. Lilia has no mobility tools besides this, so pulling her off without inting can definitely take some time to get used to. To build on top of this, Lilia is usually looking to build AP, which means you'll be extremely squishy. This along with the fact that you have no dashes means you need to be extremely precise with your movement and positioning. One wrong move can mean that you get CC chained straight into death. Dealing with team comps with heavy CC and lockdown makes your life that much more difficult, so be wary. Bruisers like Renekton and Darius can lock you down and punish you hard since you're very low ranged. Lilia's low range can definitely take some time to get used to. If you're into a very long range team comp, you're very reliant on landing long ranged ease or flash to make plays happen. Having no flash in the late game can be a deal breaker for you to be useful in a crucial fight. Lastly, Lilia's skill cap does not just come from her mechanics. To pull off Lilia requires a pretty solid understanding of clearing, counter jungling, and jungle camp sequencing. I say this is a weakness just because how reliant Lilia is on this to succeed, but when mastered, this is a massive strength. Strengths. And finally, let's discuss what makes Lilia so strong in the hands of a skilled player. First off, Lilia's extremely fast farming and movement allows you to really keep up high CS numbers while also being active on the map. It's important to check your lanes while farming to always have a plan of where you want to go next. This little bit of pre-planning could be the difference between being late to a play or on time. Next would be Lilia's massive AoE damage output. Since you deal percent health damage mixed with magic damage, you not only destroy squishies, but also melt tanks. This means that if you have the items and are relevant in the game, it's very hard for the enemy to shut you down with defensive itemization. Lilia also thrives in long extended fights, so keep this in mind as over committing right away can sometimes just get you killed. Wait out important ultimates and cooldowns before getting up close and personal. Another huge upside is that Lilia is relevant at all stages in the game. Starting at level 1, she's powerful and never really changes until super late game when everyone has 6 items. Keep in mind that the longer the game goes, your role starts to become more based on utility. Your ultimate is a massive game changer, so the importance of landing a good ult cannot be understated. Lastly, and why I love Lilia so much, is her high skill ceiling. Although for new players, this may be a weakness, the more games you put on her will really pay off. This is why she is still so strong in pro play and challenger elo, even when her win rate is so low. The best players clearly think she's still a good pick, and for good reason. Understanding your limits on the champion really makes Lilia one of a kind in the jungle. She's a mixture of a farming, ganking, and utility jungler all in one. Understanding what your role is at every point in the game is what really separates the great Lilia players from the rest. That will do it for my in-depth guide on Lilia jungle. If you stayed until the end and have any questions or opinions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. If you did enjoy, helps me out so much if you could like the video and subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell if you want to stay up to date with my posts. I try to post high quality educational league content, and I'll be cranking out more in-depth guides just like this one every week on Wednesday. If you're interested in joining the community of like-minded players looking to improve, be sure to join the Moose Den Discord. The link will be in the description. With all that being said, thank you so much for watching guys. Really appreciate it. Until the next video, peace out.